cannot let them fail. Is exactly. going to like this. No. I'll handle it. The caller is reacting. Or not. We do not fear your magic, little wizard. We have answered the mother's call. We are venom to all. And you are large. Let's hope not. Okay. Defeat Fallen Venom to complete the mission. His symbiote binds can be broken by attacking them with hero abilities. Yes, okay. Powerful enemies like Fallen Venom do not forecast which hero they intend to attack and may attack multiple times on their turn, so watch out. Yeah, these guys are obviously scary. You want to know what that beast is? It calls itself Venom. Until now, a pale imitation of a very heroic young friend of mine. <laughs> we will feed your ugly tongue to the spider wizard. Marinate it in his stomach juices and eat it with his spleen. Okay, so... One of the things about these guys that are very interesting is this symbiote skin. So after being melee attacked, 50% chance to gain symbiote skin, and then he would bind the next melee attacker, which is a sort of like a stun, basically. Uh, and then if you do a, a bind or a stun to them, it's only for one action, and they get multiple actions. They also can't be knocked into drops or off of buildings and things like that. I went ahead and redrew the heal card, even though our health is carrying over from that first section. Uh, I don't feel like I, I'm going to use a heal card right now, so I just got rid of that immediately. Um, I wouldn't mind getting the Axe of Angramis on him if we can generate the heroism. We have another Agamotto's Gaze, which I feel would be quite helpful. We could even just use this to draw the last two attacks that were played in that first sequence. Um, so that's an option. I'm looking at a potential Winds of Watum here, but from our current angle, it's not going to be that beneficial. I could knock him into stuff, though, like the Explosive Canister. Um, so that's an option. If I were to bring him over here, using a, uh, Winds of Watum to knock this guy into Fallen Venom would get us the, the card play refunded. But then I'm using up my move right now, so it's kind of like, it's a little bit questionable on that aspect. I think, I hate to do it, but I'm probably going to redraw my stake here. Because even though I'm going to generate some heroism from Agamotto's Gaze, um, I'm going to use it on Axe of Agnoramus to get him weakened for sure. So I probably just can't see us playing that right now. Okay, make him bleed. Very nice. We can get some bleed going on him. That would be great. That would be really nice. Uh, so now how do we want to sequence this? If I go make him bleed for two heroism, then I could go Agamotto's Gaze, get some attacks in my hand, probably even more blade uh, cards. We get a blade card off of this. And then my last play is probably uh, using Winds of Watum to take out one of these guys and Axe of Agnoramus on him so that uh, he's weakened. I think that's how we start this. Exactly what I needed. Okay, he got a quick strike off that. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I'm actually going to play Agamotto's Gaze first here so I can draw some additional attacks and maybe I can get a better one of Blades. Because his next two attacks do the bleed, so I don't really want to waste a quick card. A 
on that guy. So a chain is a chain is nice. Okay, so now what we can do is we can do something like this. I would prefer not wasting this generator on him. So we're just gonna knock him off. It's 100% to knock off because he's just a minion. And what's cool about this is, like, I've I've played this fight multiple times in my experience with Midnight Suns, but, like, all of the cards that you get are always different, so the fights will always play out differently. You might have certain uh, approaches that you're aiming to go for, um, but you can't always guarantee that that's going to play out the way that you want. Okay, so now we have a choice here. I think in this scenario... This is going to be enhanced, so it's going to use a little bit more of our heroism. Uh, I'll get the bleed going on the next turn, and we'll just use the quick strike here. I'm on it. Actually, no, we can do both. What am I saying? Oh, no, we so can't. Like that what am I saying? Centuries ago. I only have the one play. So we're going to do this, and... He may get the symbiote skin, but it's our last thing anyway, so that's totally okay. Actually, before I do that, before I do that, why don't I use... Yeah, here's what we're going to do. Okay. Hunter, where are you going to position for this? So Hunter would position way back there. And with the box slamming would be over here. I just want to make sure that we're out of the range of this thing blowing up. So we could use two heroism here to impart some safe damage. Let's do it. Now we don't know who Fallen Dead is attacking either. So that's something to keep in mind, but being that we're going to weaken them, I think that's okay. So we'll blow this up for some damage. How much health is there? 223. It feels like just this gigantic amount. Now this, you could argue maybe saving those things for when other enemies are present there, but um, yeah, I just want to impart as much damage to this as possible. Uh, let's get the weak being applied here. The axe is a melee attack. So he could get symbiote skin here. And he did. 50% chance. That's great. XCOM numbers. Love that. So now melee attacks um, against symbiote skin will bind the hero. So you want to do like ranged or AoE attacks. Stuff like that. And I'm out of heroism, so there's not a whole lot I can do. Uh, but he is going to attack two people, and he does have some knockbacks and things like that. Uh, I would prefer not getting knocked into that thing. So I think I'm just going to move my hunter, like, far away. So if the hunter gets targeted, it's unlikely that he gets stunned. Mother tells us to hide. No escaping this time. Okay. I suppose we should not underestimate this. Oh, he's went for the carapace bomb or whatever it's called. So we have a hero that's bound. Um, we just need to do any damage to that bind, just like uh, minions. This house belongs to Mother. If I had a quick card, that would be better. And you belong to us. We so, start with your juicy entry. This is a this is an AoE attack. That's gonna go off at the start of his turn. Rest of your mother's children so shaddy. Uh no. I need a I need a quick card ideally here. That would be great. Uh, we need to get both of these guys out of here. I'll show you how we're gonna handle that. Hmm. I would be able to to play stake on this turn. 
7 damage and apply 1 bleed to all units in the area at the start of the next turn. So if we could somehow knock these guys in there, fine, but I don't think we're going to be able to pull that off. What I'm looking at is potentially playing v Blessing of Vishanti to buff all of our other cards. That'd be one of our four card plays. Uh, then I could go into something like a Strike to apply some bleed. And if I do that, where would I end up? after landing here. I think we would end up over on... Well, we'd be outside the circle. And then, uh, that guy would be dealt with. We'd have Bleed on Fallen Venom, which would be great. That would give me enough for Stake. But if I do it that way, then Stake has to be... Um, then I'll be in the circle, which is a little problematic. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to redraw a Slash, because we're bound there anyways. Axe of Agnoramus. Um, it's not bad. The weak is already on there. I'm going to actually redraw that and give me a quick card, baby. Okay, we got Agamotto's Gaze again. So, that's not bad. I think if we play this, we probably have quick cards in the last two that were played. Um, let's start with that. Let's give it a go. Okay, sweet. Now, I wasn't tracking how many attacks we did with Blade. I don't think he's done any... Well, he did do... Hmm. I'm not sure. But I think... Let's start with this. Let me show you the way. We can knock that minion into us, which is going to unbind us. And because it's quick, we get the card play refunded. So that unlocks a bunch of extra options. Now, is he immobile in this situation? Because what we could potentially look at is flipping him in over here. And then that would keep our guys uh, safe and cancel his AoE attack. So that's, that's actually a decent option. Uh, I think what we go for here is we go for the stake. Trying to think if I need to use Blessing of Vishanti here. It's only six damage. And it's not like it modifies our bleed or anything. So it takes this up to, to 30. Um, this would be maybe really good as a as kind of like a finisher, but we at least have a couple of rounds left to go here. So I think for now, what I'm gonna do is just get some lifesteal going. We saw actually on Blade's health bar that he had one bleed attack left, so. If you rewind that, you can see a little green icon on his health bar. Uh, so now we know his bleed is gone. But that's cool because now this guy's bleeding. And because his offense went up by 2, he's taking 12 damage at the end of each turn now. So that's amazing. We can go uh, Quick Strike here. To take out the minion. Some for the rest of us. Then we got two card plays left. Uh, I'm looking to see if we have to move. I think if we want to move, we could do it. Um, but this is going to cost too much heroism. I could just go like a double chain here on him for 12 damage. And then do our last play where we whip into one of these. And it'll discard a random card of which I think that's totally okay. Here it comes. Okay, he's leveled up again. Even best gets better. So, I would like to see a little summary here, but plus 4 offense now. So, if we reapply bleed, it's going to be 16 damage a turn, which is cool. Uh, bleed doesn't stack in terms of amount of damage. It stacks in terms of the number of turns that it gets applied. Um, I am thinking that I could do something like this. I bring Doctor Strange over. He leaps, does 15 damage here. 
using one heroism. Then we use one more heroism and our last card play to knock him and stun him. The reason I'm using uh, Doctor Strange is because I want to try to keep him far away from... Uh, I, I think we're going to end up cancelling his spike bomb. Yeah, removed if incapacitated, so it doesn't matter either way. Should have looked at my positioning a little bit better. He's still angry. This is going to cause us to discard one of our cards here. Um, I'm going to put him as far over to the right as possible. It's only going to remove one action. Fragile. But, like, our heroes are kind Fragile. of near this barrel, so if he does attack, there's a decent chance he ends up next to that. You are puny. Okay, yeah, 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 that, that was good, yeah, mm-hmm, that's great. So when you get knocked into stuff, you take the initial damage from whenever the attack is, but then you also take the collision damage, so we something to keep in mind. We may not be ready for this thing yet. Might be smarter to pull back until we know what we're up against here. Yes. Okay. Surrender. Be eaten. Fill our belly with your tasty fear. He's at 104. Blade, He's at 104. Uh, these guys are both targeting the Hunter. Now, if he attacks the Hunter, the Hunter will go down for sure. We have an Axe of Agnoramus, though, so we can apply weak. I probably do something like make him bleed first here. Um, I could keep a whip. That could possibly be our last card play again, where we knock him into something. And he only gets one action. But I'm not feeling super confident if the Hunter is this low that he doesn't target the Hunter. So that's a little bit of a concern. Um, hmm. So I'm going to redraw Slash. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. It's a uh, quick strike for 10 with crit. But it's quick. You know what? This is fine. I don't have the space to knock these guys into him, so we'll just set up and get rid of the minions. Now, if they were just targeting these guys, I'd probably... I would consider just letting them act. And fun funneling all of our damage, whether it's a quick card or not, into Fallen Venom. Now, we still have four card plays. So, I think we definitely go make them bleed first. That's going to give us a blade card. Should get the blood pumping. Okay. Okay. So, it's going to reapply the bleed. It should come in at the higher amount now since he leveled as well. Um, we've got this up to 36 damage. My hesitation is whether I'm playing a heal card or not. That's that's my that's the risk, you know. And it, it is a bit of a risk, but he would be weakened. I could even argue like reapplying this doesn't do a lot, but we're getting 16 damage right now, which is kind of nice. Yeah, we're going to start with this. Actually, hold on a second. How big is this AoE? Okay, so we're going to be outside of that. The worry is he gets the symbiote skin here. So, I'm going to take my higher priority card... ...first. And see how this goes. That will put us in that circle, though. But it's only 10 damage if we if we take it. Depends whether he gets the symbiote skin or not.
Okay. Even a sorcerer supreme we got the right side of the 50% this time. So now I would get the heroism for whip off of strike. And then... I have... We have a slide here. Let me just look at something. Would this reach him? No, it, it comes up short. So moving over there with the slide isn't going to be that beneficial. Plus, it's the two requires two heroism. I could also look at redrawing. It's just it's a risk, man. So he took the 16, bleed is reapplied. Future Chris here coming in hot. Uh, I did bring up this bug to the devs and they confirmed that this is being fixed in a patch. So it should work exactly how I described it. But in some situations right now, uh, it doesn't. But in the future when they patch it, good to go. So just a heads up. I really want to incapacitate him at least for one turn here, or at least for one of his actions. It's kind of risky. Because we could... The hunter could go down here, which really impacts our score. <laughs> like myself every day. Okay, so that's gone. Now, uh, what I'll do is... I'm actually not sure how he's going to react to this, but... If I bring the hunter over here... I don't know if he can knock him into anything, but... Let's see. Please just attack one of the other guys. They're here too. Oh, great. Okay. And we're stunned. It was that enough to kill us, though. I don't think we're knocked out. I think we might have, like... I think we might have one health. <laughs> we have two. We have two. That's crazy. And are rewarded with your meat. And to think Lilith was a vegetarian. Okay, so we can end it here at least. So we're not going to focus on those guys at all. We're going to go straight in here for the strike. Actually, let's do it like this. Because Stake will, Stake will one-shot him. He'll make him bleed here. I'll put this to good use. Let's go Blessing of Ashanti. We're just basically generating heroism. This is going to also buff the damage the that Stake does. The most and then this will finish off Fallen Venom with a nice heroic from Blade. Goodbye. Is that all you got? That was very close. No escape from me. To be a knocked out there on the hunter. Hold up. We don't know what we're dealing with yet. <laughs> Friendly, neighborly, spiderly? I was in the neighborhood, you know, being friendly. Seemed like you folks could use a hand, Doc. <laughs> Spider-Man! Jeez, Eddie, what happened to you? That's sort of a horrifyingly terrible new look. The tongue was gross enough, but... Whoa! Someone is extra touchy today. We will rip your face off and suck the marrow from your bones! Always nice to see you too, buddy. So, I'm thinking your friends here could use a little break. How about I take Eddie here for his afternoon walk? No! Don't worry.
worry, Doc. That's just his way of saying he cares! <laughs> Come on, did we get it? Oh, okay. I'm very happy about that. I wasn't sure if we were gonna if we were gonna be able to get the three stars on the first mission, heroic three difficulty. That is very encouraging. Now, uh, I'm open for suggestions here uh, as to how we should handle these uh, photos. I kind of like from XCOM, like where there's almost a like an MVP that happens over the course of the fight and just kind of develops and then they're like the the main person. Uh, you could argue Blade. I, I think, honestly, we got a, so many extra card plays from Doctor Strange that Doctor Strange is probably the one that we could do. So, like, even here, like, I think we could just randomize until we get the MVP. They could be the photo. And then what's cool about these, you can turn these into um, photos that you can display at the Abbey if you want. So, um yeah, I'm, I think maybe we go the MVP row. But if you guys have suggestions, then uh, let me know. Sometimes it'll be a team MVP. I think that's cool. I don't know if I need to actually take the photo like that. Maybe I do, yeah. Okay. And then confirm and exit. Cool. 240 gloss. No joke, either. Congratulations. New world or not, some things remain unchanged. The look. What look? Boldly charging headfirst into the jaws of your enemy. Courageously risking the lives of yourself and your teammates. Just to play the hero. This is the Fire Dragon all over again. Fire Dragoon. My memories may be fragmented, but as I recall, I killed the bastard. And all it cost was a village. Oh, of course. I see it now. The look. Cut him some slack. It wasn't that simple. It never is. Which is why I sent you to help. If Spider-Man hadn't come along today, we could have lost far more than... Than the Sanctum? Or Wanda. She means I could have died. Again, putting an end to her eternal crusade against my mother. Well, that actually might be the look. You've been through a lot. For now, it's enough that you all made it back in one piece. More or less. We'll talk more later. Get some rest. Okay, now we also got uh, some friendship XP on Dr. Spooky and Blade there. Uh, that happens when you take the Hunter out on missions. If you take, if you go on side missions without the Hunter, then you won't gain friendship. So it's actually pretty nice incentive to bring the Hunter along. Uh, the other thing that that does is keeps your hunter leveling up and you have kind of a minimum threshold of levels for your superhero friends uh, that will scale up to be, I think, a couple of levels below where the hunter's at, so. Not to be the nagging old lady, but I told you not to push too hard. Yeah, well, I mean, things happen, you know? If you're wondering... You can explore all of this, and we will explore all of this. But for now, we have some other things we need to do. Not arrived when he did. No kidding. Caretaker would have been pissed if Venom had actually eaten a hunter. Yes, one disaster averted. But we still need to figure out how to get Wanda and the Sanctum back. An impressive first outing, just as I had expected. You're going to do great things, Hunter. I like you, Strange. I like you a lot. So we picked up a couple of things here called reagents. And um, these get used for a bunch of stuff. But more importantly, eventually we unlock some type of cauldron where we can craft things out of these reagents. Um, they're, it's neat because they're specific to different areas of the abbey. 
and then it's also dependent on what time of day it is. So you may find certain things in the day, certain things at night, things in certain areas, not in others. So try to keep in mind as you're picking those up. Hey, for what it's worth, I think you did okay out there. You got some decent hang time, even uh, given you were wearing, what, 70, 80 pounds of chainmail? <laughs> On the stark scale of reckless yet daring heroics, I give it a solid 6 out of 10. Don't worry, you'll get there, with a little help. Thank you. One can dream. Your support is appreciated. Oh, no problem. Already got a few ideas cooking. You're not allergic to mimetic poly... You know what? Never mind. Why spoil the surprise? I, I couldn't help but overhear Auntie Caretaker over there telling you to get some rest. That uh, sounds like a good idea to me. I suppose I could keep you company on the way, seeing as our rooms are in the same direction and all. Besides, no one should be forced to walk the hallways around here alone. <laughs> He's a little scared, eh? Okay, okay. So, here we are. The old room, huh? It's, uh, it's not bad. Functional. Solid construction. Almost cozy. Love the antique furnishings from the early Mephisto collection. Full transparency, Hunter. There's another reason I asked to join you here, other than my abject terror of this entire facility. Stopped here before, while you were out. Wanted to surprise you with a nice little housewarming present. Was all set to write you a lovely welcome note, but I'm fairly certain that wasn't red ink in your quill. Red ink in my quill? I do not have a quill. Even better. <laughs> Relax, Tony. I simply jest. It is an ink derived of the spider lily flower. Red spider lily flowers. Of course it was. Obviously. I also totally With knew that. just a touch of Manphibian blood for power. Haha! -ha, another zinger. And we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, I suppose I should leave before whatever monstrosity that is most definitely hiding under your bed jumps out, rips my face off, and then proceeds to feast on my soul. I'll leave you to it. May your sleep be filled with pleasant dreams, Tony. Right back at you. Oh, and if you hear the shrieking of a grown man, please ignore it. It's just me, walking to my room. Iron Man is now available for combat missions. Love it. Hi, I'm Tony Stark. But if you're hearing this message, you already know that. When I'm not saving the world, I solve the world's problems with technological means, like the one you're holding. I call it the Spark. A secure information and communication device built only for superheroes. It does all the usual. Private messages, pictures, and calls for some reason. But it also comes with access to Superlink, a private social network exclusively for your cape-wearing, world-saving compatriots. You might ask, Tony, aren't you just repurposing a failed product from your communications division? If you do, I'll revoke access and let everyone else know you're a jerk. I call it the Wonder Man. Nice. So the Superlink uh, is mostly for uh, some lore stuff, just some fun banter. Uh, but also, you do certain quests through here. You accept friendship level ups through here. And this is stuff that... There's a ton of stuff that pops into here that I've never read, so I want to go through it. Uh, Robbie Reyes made the first post. Uh, and Nico says, what do you mean? We've had Superlink for months now. We use it every day. I meant first post that the hunter sees. Robbie, you can't keep doing this when someone new joins Superlink. Well, yes, I can. He means who will throw your spark in the lagoon. He wouldn't do that. Right, Blade? Right, Blade? Fine, last time. The the vibe here is very Facebook, okay? If you have not been on Facebook for a long time, uh, this is what it's like now, okay? Ilyana Rasputin says, First we make Wanda leave. Now we leave her to die. Some heroes. Strange says, I assure you that's not the case. She was sent to you for protection. I see how that worked, Supreme Sorcerer. Little tension. We both know it's more complicated than that, Miss Rasputin. I took Wanda as my apprentice for a reason. Have faith she can handle herself. Blade says, Strange did everything he could to get Wanda. So did I. And the hunter. Take a breath, Ilyana. We'll get back to her soon enough. So this is her talking about the previous mission we just went on. Wanda should be here with us. And Strange says, Of that, I am in agreement. Now we can explore our room, inspect the journal page, closet, and painting. We'll start with this. So, I, personally, if you guys know me, I love going through all the books and lore and stuff that we find. And literally everything we find, we will be reading. So, Hunter's Journal, April 3rd, 1703. So, this is from my old journal. 
Aunt Sarah, the caretaker, wants me to practice my letters. And so here I am. But every time I dip this pen in ink, I just want more and more to go out beyond the yard into my secret spots. I left my dolls scattered about before the storm, and I'm afraid they're hurt. Do dolls hold grudges? Agatha says they don't, but I still feel sad for them. So these are sometimes just lore, sometimes little hints. Um, this one is a bit of a hint to look for some dolls out and about. My old journal. Maybe it is time I start writing in it again. Uh, so we are building collections out of certain things. So let me take you there. So one of the collections is the Hunter's Journal. If we can find all 12 pages, then we unlock something special. And uh, hopefully we can do that. There's multiple collections that happen. Some lore isn't part of any collection. And uh, you won't be able to review it later. So read it right on the spot. Uh, let's check out the painting. Painted by, so happy then. painted by Sally Owens. Agatha and Sarah with Hound. This is Charlie, our dog. Uh, Agatha, who we will meet, I think. And then uh, Sarah. And we'll check out the closet. So this is where... enough room for my armor in this thing. This is where you buy uh, cosmetic unlocks with the gloss that you earn in missions. So right now, it's only giving us, like, a handful of things. But this is going to exponentially expand as we start finding chests. Things are going to drop. We're, gonna, we're just going to unlock tons of stuff. And then they become available to buy with gloss. Um, well, how do I want to... I'm, I'm leaning more just towards a common athletic black top here. Um, nothing too, nothing too fancy. So that's in our inventory now. There's a couple of other things in here I want to look at, because if you're a total monster, if you don't buy this as your first room upgrade, because yes, there are room upgrades as well, you can buy additional picture frames, a writing desk, some rugs, a mirror, uh, couches, and then you can customize some of the colors and stuff of this stuff. You can, like, upgrade these to be even better than the ones you bring in originally. But the first thing you need to buy is a plush dog bed for Charlie. Like, come on. Let's get real. And then you can uh, customize certain things. Right now, our bed could be customized with different colors. That's a lot of gloss to be spending. And you might be thinking, well, it's just for cosmetics, right? Yeah, like 95% for cosmetics. But I did find that eventually we're going to get access to a gift shop to buy gifts for our superheroes. And that actually has really tangible gameplay impacts because those gifts boost your friendship levels with the superheroes, which unlock really strong passives and other things. So uh, that becomes really important. And so I always like to keep a little gloss in the tank, um, but we'll be buying tons of cosmetic stuff as we go. It also costs a little bit of gloss if you want to um, put up certain paintings, convert things into paintings and stuff like that. So it all ties together pretty nicely. Um, the other thing is, if we go in here now, we have access to changing our base appearance. So instead of just the original handful of options, you can now get into the different um, hair colors and stuff. So if I wanted to, I'm going to immediately go into, into the gray. I like that, but we're not done. I'm going to change my roots. Uh, do I have like a... Okay, so I can keep the black roots if I wanted to do it like that. I think that's kind of cool, actually. And then do I go gray to match? Or do we keep a little color? Maybe we keep a little color in the beard for now. Yeah, I think I think that's all right. Hair options, there's like, there's a ton of them. I know some of you guys are into this stuff. This one is going to be a favorite for sure, the volume. Uh, but you can also do highlights, so if you want to see what those look like. They're actually, I think this is a really cool hair system for whatever reason. Like, I just think it's neat that you can do this. I don't need to right now, but um, that's what's in there. We could do some aviators if we wanted to. There's a uh, silk mask you can wear. You can do like these headbands or royalty. And again, you're going to find as we keep going, there's tons of stuff that unlocks. Uh, different types of swim trunks. Why are these in here? Ask Jake Solomon, okay? He pushed for the pool to be here. This was like his one non-negotiable. And uh, it's in there. There's a pool. So if you want to look good at the pool, that's how you do it. Okay? Now we're going to go to sleep. Now you might think we should end the episode here. And we might. 
But uh, I'd like to set these up similar to, to my XCOM episodes. So we'll talk about that after this. visiting your door every morning for the past 300 years. <laughs> oh, it must have been so hard on her. Not just her. I suppose that's why I might have been a little curt before. A little? You already made the ultimate sacrifice once. Maybe I'm in no rush to see you do it again. We do not choose our destiny. But we can choose to duck. <laughs> First lesson you ever taught me. And still the most important. Especially now that you have all these eyes on you. I have noticed. To these people, you are a being of myth and legend. A grand hero of old. And they're right. You are a hero. But I also know the battle that rages within your soul. It's not enough that you are a hero. You need to decide what type of hero you will be. I'm sure there will be plenty of opportunity for that in the days to come. For now, I would head to the Forge. Our new guests are eager to show you something. This was a lot easier when it was just you and I beheading the Dark Legion as we traipsed through the woods. Don't forget about Agatha. I never could. <laughs> Okay, Daily Bugle re repost bot posted in here. Spider-Man and his amazing friends unleash monster upon city. Garish Bleecker Street Manor sealed off by the authorities. When will the spider menace and his pet ink monster end their trail of destruction through Greenwich Village? And let's not forget about disgraced surgeon Stephen Strange. Is he in cahoots with the web-slinging wrongdoer? Did he hope to turn his uh, row house into no house? <laughs> he replies, Garish, by the Ancient One. Who runs this paper? Mephisto? Blade says, figures I'm not even mentioned in the article. Have we heard from our pajama-clad friend? Carol says, still nothing, but based on the police band radio chatter we intercepted, I'd say they're closing in on Little Italy. Doubt they're stopping for a slice. Tony says, everyone knows it's all about the linguine and clam sauce there. At least you didn't say Gabagool. Strange says, indeed. I met a Gabagool once. We definitely do not want to invoke one of those right now. So, Spider-Man? Not that easy. These boys move too damn fast. Keep at it. Even in New York City, those two stand out. Uh, Nico also posted, Swooping in in the last second to save the day, leading away that carnivorous sludge monster to keep New York City safe. Just gonna say it. He's the hashtag astounding Spider-Man. <laughs> Ileana says he had too many words. Blade goes, don't let those works or those words or the red and blue pajamas fool you. Spider-Man's no joke. Robbie says, wow, look, somebody made a friend. Blade, more like an enemy of an enemy. Starting to think we could use more of those. Carol says, there's the old Avenger tolerate your spooky, strange teammate attitude I was looking for. Nico says, I know you're going for this month's Team Spirit Award. Hashtag Blade cares. <laughs> Blade goes, I have to train. That's hilarious. That's great. I love it. Okay. Uh, the point I was going to make before, for episodes, what I'd like to do is start, like, pre-combat mission to show you what the setup is, what our decks are like, uh, any combat items, and then go into the mission and take care of anything else, like research, card upgrades, unlocks, exploring, after those missions. Um, so these first couple of episodes will take a while to kind of get into that rhythm, um, but we will get there. Also, every single day, Every single day, without fail, you pet Charlie. Every day. Good girl, Charlie. This is actually, there's a gameplay impact to this. Okay? This matters. Notice, Charlie's level one in the bottom left, okay? 
Uh, every time you pet Charlie, she increases experience, basically. And she gets better versions of her cards, which matter for things later. Good day, Hunter. So this is the Abbey. I know the sanctum is airborne and covered in We'll be spending a lot of time in here. I don't get it. There's uh, little things like this Magic around. Way in. We've got Something some arcane keys that we need to find. There's a few chests. And then here's all like the dorms, okay? So everybody that's staying here has their own room. You can see um, Doctor Strange's room there. Back here, this is like the chapel, I believe it's called. And this is a fire rod. We're gonna grab this. Ember swirl in the cloudy crystal, almost too hot to touch. Its surface glows like liquid fire. Glyphs of smoke resolve and vanish around a core of obsidian glass. So what do we do with that? Well, there's a little bit of a puzzle later that we're gonna wanna solve. Tarot card for strength. These are collectibles, but they have some cool lore attached to them. This is um, uh, electrical energy erupts around Thor as he wields Mjolnir. This card represents great courage and taking control of one's destiny. We also have a journal page here. August 15th, 1710. I try to remind myself that 16 is a young age for so much power, but I lose my temper at times. This child nearly grown is rapidly progressing. The training goes well. Oh, sorry. I should clarify. This is the caretaker's journal. Okay. The training goes well, and I'm optimistic for how we may be able to combat Lilith in the future, but there have been outbursts. If we cannot control these, I do worry that we may face some unfortunate collateral damage. Sounds so harsh to put these words on page, but this is the reality that I face. Agatha and I have discussed options for controlling this power, but nothing has worked just yet. My latest attempt is to forge a ward to be worn around the neck. If I succeed, it will not only help the child channel this energy, but act as a shield against detection by Lilith or her minions. Only time will tell. So this is cool because from my previous understanding, the caller has certain special abilities, but like I'm talking combat abilities. I've now noticed in some of the opening cutscenes, uh, some of the reaction to Lilith, that the the, the caller is, is more than that. And now here in the caretaker's journal, this is her attempt at, like, a protective ward. So, something to keep in mind. This actually has a, a big story impact, too, it seems. Very cool. Strange glyphs. Five symbols arranged in a row. The order is probably important. There's a ton of glyphs all over the place. So, this is a puzzle I don't know. And I'm excited to figure out. Uh, but let's just take another look at the back halls here. And these will fill up. Like, as people move in, they'll take one of these rooms. Iron Man's room, Blade's room. Very cool. Okay. Uh, here's the pool, in case you're wondering. The pool's, the pool's a happening, happening spot. I just so happen to know that there's another water rod here. Barely a stone at all. This blue-black topaz almost seeps through the fingers when held. It smells strongly of a tide pool, and if held to the ear, sounds of the sea. Very nice. Very nice. That explains so much. This is the yard where you do training with Blade. There's a couple of extra credits here, some gloss. You'll find things like gloss, credits, essence, just laying around as you peruse the Abbey every day. Um, so it's it's worth doing because they add up over time, especially the essences. That's what you're going to use when you're crafting and upgrading cards. Think you can tell your friend inside there to turn it up a few hundred Kelvin? I could. However, it might shatter the containment spell preventing him from incinerating this facility. Uh, I think we're good. And just in time. The forge has certainly changed. Right. Caretaker said this all happened after your siesta. What spooky castle would be complete without its own Babylonian demon-powered furnace? Sumerian fire demon. His name is Babs. Oh, now it all makes sense. Well, once you get past the esoteric terror of the situation, I've found this thing actually has some uses. Molecular bonding, breaking down evil gamma serums, fashion accessorizing... <clears throat> yes, speaking of, 
Oh, right. It's ready. Your armor seemed to offer minimal protection against the Venom creature. I noticed. Yeah, I thought you could use an upgrade. Well hammered, well fired. Caretaker did not mention that you two were such skilled smithies. Yep, I am Iron Smithy. <laughs> Perhaps you should just try it on. Yeah, now we're talking. Still think I could have used a cloak. Actually, our our hair choice complements the suit pretty perfectly. Right. Not bad for our first collaboration. I still think it could have benefited from a cloak. Yes, we know. I think it benefit from a cloak. The Orb of Agamotto is in here. Strange's Orb of Agamotto, one of the few artifacts recovered from the Sanctum Sanctorum. A powerful energy emanates from the inside as the orb seems to rotate indefinitely. Now, you might be noticing uh, we're gaining arcane knowledge every time we investigate something. That goes towards our arcane level. And as you increase your arcane level, you get better drops from the chests around the abbey and stuff. Once we hit level one, we can start hovering over this, and it will actually show us what those extra benefits are. One of Strange's capes suspended in an ornate glass case. The cape floats in the air, rippling slightly through the, though the air is still. Nice. Now uh, we won't have to explore the forge every time we come in here. This is just like a one-time thing to figure out what all of this stuff is. Ah, I see. A wooden chest with brass hardware containing glass vials. Yeah, fair enough. It's very, very Dr. Spooky, yeah. Curious. Clutter with books, some of them older than you, and you are quite old. Yes, keep rubbing it in, thank you. The moon. <laughs> moon Knight hides his true identity behind his cloak and shadow. This card represents deception but also creativity and the unconscious. I know um, leading up to the DLC announcement, like they've shared all the DLC uh, characters in the, in the DLC one or whatever. And I know so many people wanted Moon Knight. I saw so many comments, it was crazy. Um, but I mean, Hope's, Hope's not dead. He's in here. He's in the, at least he's in the tarot cards. Anything could happen. One of Tony's something. many Iron Man suits, polished to a high gloss, though it is powered off. The eyes seem to follow you. <laughs> you know, I have a great psychiatrist from this Nova rises up into the starry night sky, surrounded by stars that represent the support of his team. This card symbolizes serenity and hope for the future. I think this is a deep cut for a lot of people that I have talked to that play the game, like people hardcore into comics. I think that's pretty much everything in here. There. I hate to admit it, but somehow this ancient forge puts any arc reactor I've got to shame. Who would have thought mystically bound demon power would be so damn energy efficient? Or carbon neutral? Certainly got that new suit of yours done a lot faster than I expected. Speaking of, what's the verdict, boss? Hmm. <laughs> it is nice having an armorer on demand. Anytime. I tried to make this version a little take less that. palatable to that symbiote thing. It was this close to making it menthol flavored. But tools are just one part of the equation. You gotta know how to use them too. You were out, what, 300 years before we woke you from your eternal rest? I'm betting you have questions, so ask away, Hunter. Oh, I will. Um, as we progress through some of this dialogue, you may notice options that have a light or a dark Hunter icon. I'm gonna be leaning into the dark side of the hunter for this playthrough. So anytime there's a dark option, we are choosing it 100% without fail. Everything else that has no indication whatsoever, I'm just gonna freeform it and feel like whatever strikes me at that time. I take it this new version is a technological marvel? Impact resistant carbon composites, some patent pending alloy mesh, and a few touches from Dr. Spooky over there. And hey, the built-in communicator means we can talk to each other without sending a raven. <laughs> S 
So it is a marvel then? Lightweight, nearly indestructible, and modular enough for future upgrades. Frankly, I wouldn't have used your old suit to wax the Mandarin's car. That's harsh, but probably true. Is all this magic a threat to your new technology? It might surprise some people to hear this, but I do like some things with rules. Isotope decay, magnetic fields, and gamma oscillation make a lot more sense to me than eye of newt, bat wings, and a sprinkle of sunshine. At least they did before everything changed. Hmm. I cannot help but feel partially responsible. Well, I wouldn't take it personally. We were detecting changes in both magic and science months before you woke up. But yeah, things have definitely hit high gear since then. Seen anything strange around here? What, other than my roommate? Boom! Roasted! <laughs> but on a more serious note, this place Boom, is roasted. legitimately haunted. Mirrors look back at you. My room rearranges itself. And worst of all, magic cats. Was it suspiciously elusive, even for a cat? Actually, yes. Thought I was going crazy there for a second, but clearly I'm still firing on all cylinders. It just poofed in next to me out in the yard. Small, black, furry. Cute little thing. Probably some kind of shape-shifting monster knowing this place. Guess we'll have to find out. <laughs> what sort of things are you doing in here? Oh, that's right. You were out a while. Basically, we've got a gigantic demon inside the magic box here that provides near limitless power for whatever we might need. Sounds insane, but sometimes it's easier to just go with it. <laughs> okay. So, why not magically create a way through that symbiote shield? Have you ever known it to work that way? We can't just wish upon a star here. We need to know what we're making first and put together the right components. Otherwise, I'd have already whipped up Strange, a new personality. Boom! Roasted! Oh, no. Just me. You must have an interesting origin story of your own. Well, just your typical American boy. Pops was a founding member of the military-industrial complex. Mom, a famous socialite. Tragedy struck when I lost them both in a car crash, which turned out to be a hit from a rival corporation. I spent my early teens at MIT, trying to clear my head. and was all set to follow in Dad's footsteps as a war profiteer. Then one day, fortune shined on me, in the form of some errant shrapnel that lodged itself just above my heart. So I did what anybody in that situation would do. I built a super suit and started fighting crime. Jeez. You seem well adjusted enough, considering. Exactly. Which means there's hope for you here. <laughs> oh, I find these apocalypse scenarios uh. will save you tons of therapy. Uh, this is like for oh I just enjoy this stuff so much because I haven't I've just been holding off on this for so long and it's such a pleasure to just go through all of this and take my time. Thanks for catching me up on things. Anytime. Oh, and speaking of things, remember that uh, creepy gamma goop you found from that hopped up Hydra soldier? Well, I gave it a peek and it explains a lot. If you have a minute, meet me at the anvil over there, and I'll walk you through it. I promise it'll be worth your time. You're gonna notice, if you're familiar with XCOM at all, like, the way that the the base is set up, and how you do research and upgrades and everything, is very similar to XCOM. Although XCOM is kind of like that ant farm view, this view. This is more, obviously, navigating a, a 3D space. But the systems in place are very reminiscent of that. And uh, so if, if you're familiar with XCOM, you'll be right at home in terms of your base management. Okay, so a couple things just to quickly point out on this screen. We have 114 credits. This is important to upgrade um, buildings out either out in the yard or in the forge. Your, our research level is currently zero. You need to increase your research level to unlock higher level projects. Uh, for now, we're going to focus on gamma coil analysis. Now, I doubt advanced gamma thermodynamics was a hot topic at Yield Demon Hunting School, so I'm just going to give you the condensed version. I appreciate that. Closest I've ever seen to this substance is pumping through Bruce's veins. Part gamma accelerant, part unknown element. Calling it coil for now, given its unique atomic structure. Man, I love acronyms. <laughs> 
This stuff is more volatile than Nick Fury on a Monday morning. But Hydra doesn't seem to mind. They're using it to get stronger. Exactly. A few drops would make your average salamander look like Fin Fang Foom. Thankfully, with a little help from Dr. Spooky and our haunted oven over here, I think two can play at this game. You are not suggesting we start injecting ourselves with it. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Though I can see some future applications for my energy drink line, I was thinking we apply this stuff towards upgrading our equipment. I like where this is going. Just give me a little time here and I can whip up some pretty fun toys. How about we give Hydra a taste of their own gamma-powered medicine for a change? So, how's the whole saving the world thing going? So Tony can use the gamma coils recovered in combat to create hero abilities. Only one of the abilities on offer can be selected, so choose wisely. There is a research project that will unlock very soon, so we get more options and we get to choose two abilities instead of one. So let's go ahead and analyze. The abilities in the coil are based on who was out on the mission when you earned the coil. Take your pick, Hunter. Okay, so we have all of these abilities. So the idea here is, well, our deck can have eight cards. What happens if we get multiple of these? So we have two of each, we get a third, then we can upgrade it and uh, get a better version. So what's the upgrade? If you hit F here, you can hit then C on this screen, and you can see this would buff Quick Strike so that it retains Quick, it's the same damage, but now if the target has Bleed, they're getting plus 16 damage, which is a huge amount. Um, and this could turn a card that you would normally just use against minions into something that you could finish off KOing a stronger elite enemy and still get the card play refunded. So that actually might be if a this decent thing option. Me turns into a giant gateway to ancient Egypt, I'm quitting. Make and Bleed is really nice, in my opinion, to upgrade. You get uh, two blade cards drawn. And your next three damage cards apply two bleed. So, for me, this is kind of a, a no-brainer here. Whip is also a nice upgrade where it uh, adds a little bit of damage and removes the heroism cost. So, pretty nice. But you still are discarding a random card, which can backfire. Uh, that said, we're going to go make him bleed here. And uh, I'm happy with that. So now we'll be able to use the extra card to upgrade one copy, and we'll have a, an upgraded copy and then a regular one. Ah. Hunter, your new attire suits you quite well. But how are you holding up on the inside? I know it's easy to look upon me and simply see the universe's utmost authority on all things mystical and macabre, Hunter. However, in addition to being Earth's Sorcerer Supreme, I am also your doctor. You mean a physician of the medical arts? You jest. I assure you, Hunter, I do not jest. <laughs> they don't call me Mr. Strange, now do they? Except for Tony. Fair point. Your awakening ritual was admittedly a touch more chaotic than I had originally intended, and well, after your violent encounter with Venom, my oath to Hippocrates compels me to check in with you. Simply put, how do you feel? That's a tough question. We play the nice guy here with him. You lost much yesterday, Doctor. I am the one who should be asking you how you are feeling. I appreciate that, Hunter. Nice. I admit I did not expect the child of Lilith to have the capacity for such empathy. And you're right, of course. I, for one, do not know if I will ever feel 100% again after the events of yesterday. I still can't believe what transpired, the sanctum, all that knowledge, Wanda, lost, swallowed whole by the black mouth of that foul venom creature. With all my resources, all my gifts, I should have seen this outcome spelled out in the sacred geometry of this universe years ago. But I miscalculated. Hmm. Now, like, for some people, if you're, uh, 
a little bit more sarcastic with them or aggressive. Like, they may actually respect that more, but with Strange, I don't have that vibe. The Lith's power has placed a dark shroud over us all, Doctor. You are not alone in this. Your words are appreciated. Still, I must not allow the underlying truth of the situation to become shrouded as well. It's not just the Sanctum Sanctorum that was lost yesterday. It was my protege, Wanda. She was, is, my charge, my responsibility, and I failed her. But I am determined not to let that happen with you, Hunter, which is why I am here to answer any questions you may have. Perhaps my wisdom may benefit you more than it has me thus far. There is this kind of underlying push and pull of, I want to build friendships, so I want to pick the quote-unquote right answers, but also there's some unique questions where you're like, that may not get me the heart to pop up on the screen, but I want to know the answer. When it's stuff like this where it's, you know, just ask me whatever you want, I think we can go through the whole list like we did with... Um, uh, Tony. That creature on the roof. You have run into it before. Unfortunately, yes. In the simplest of terms, Venom is an alien species living in symbiosis with a human known as Eddie Brock. Okay. He's something of a fixture in New York these days, but typically his hijinks are confined to harassing Spider-Man. How does Eddie feel about this arrangement? He seems to relish the experience. And under Lilith's spell, they've clearly become more cohesive than ever before. Tell me about your Sanctum's wards of protection. I have never heard of a protection spell that powerful. In your time, I'm sure you've encountered a variety of minor wards and protective spells. The Sanctum Sanctorum was shielded by one such incantation, but greatly amplified by the convergence of ley lines. And no one has ever broken the spell? Ever? There's always a first for everything, but I had honestly never imagined a scenario in which the wards could be broken. Perhaps it was arrogance on my part, but Lilith is among the more cunning enemies we've ever faced. I'm sure there's a decent amount of arrogance in there, yeah. How did Wanda come into your care? Wanda's story is quite tragic and perhaps not mine to tell. There was an accident on the Abbey grounds not long ago involving Agatha. Okay. That must have been some accident. Agatha had been teaching Wanda, hoping she would learn to control her immense but very raw power. As their training progressed, Wanda was encouraged to push herself further. Eventually, she pushed too far. <laughs> Can we dive into that for more? Wanda's story is... there was an accident. Oh, cool. I feel like everyone is avoiding mention of Agatha. I can't say I'm surprised, but I'm afraid it's really not my place. You should speak to Sarah about her when you're ready. Okay, fair enough. Let us talk later. Visit whenever you like. It's not often I get to converse with a true legend. <laughs> Tony probably doesn't love that, but too bad for him. Okay. Let's go talk to Blade. Welcome to the yard. At least that's what we're calling it these days. Caretaker put me in charge of your training. Too bad she didn't listen to me yesterday. Now that we know what we're up against, I think we can all use the practice. Any questions? Absolutely. You know me. I did, but they are about you. Right when it's time to train? From all Sarah told us about you, she never described you as lazy. <laughs> Bro. Everyone loves you when you're dead. <laughs> he doesn't like Tell that. Me, does that mean you are half loved? <laughs> she didn't describe you as a snarky jackass, but here we are. Cool. Right, Starting Stark off on the right Jr., foot. Ask your questions. 
Great, great, great. Can I ask about you? I guess. Is your name really Blade? Is your name really the Hunter? Yes. Oh, I... Really? <laughs> your mom, before she became the mother of demons, looked into your cradle and decided to name her firstborn child the Hunter. That is how I understand it. It takes all kinds. So, is your name really Blade? No. What is it? It's private. Is it embarrassing? No, the hunter. <laughs> but I only share it with friends. Jeez. You do not consider me a friend? Not yet. Don't take it personally. Right, I guess that's fair. His name in the in the uh, comics and stuff is Eric Brooks, I believe. How did you become a Dampier? I imagine it's the you same say here. That but... Like I had a choice. I was born this way. How is that possible? A vampire bit my mother. Problem was, I was still in the womb. I'm lucky I was even born. Don't know if that's how it always is, but that's the way it went down for me. How long have you been around? I don't exactly know. I think of myself as mid-twenties, maybe. I lost a lot of time. Mid-twenties? Much of the last century was a blur. I have occasional memories, almost like coming up for air before being yanked back down into the depths. What happened? I killed a lot of vampires. I hadn't lost my mind exactly, but I got into a rhythm and never stopped. Never had a reason to stop. Not until I met Caretaker. And then? She gave me a reason to stop. He had a really, they released a, a sequence of um, prequel shorts and he had a really good one where she basically approached him and said like, I'm forming a team. And he's always been like kind of a lone operator, at least w when I got into uh, the, the Blade movies when I was younger, he was just like a badass, right? And um, so she was basically like, I've got a, I'm putting together a team and he's like, I'm in like right away. So he kind of craves these people, but he does got like a hard exterior and he's not giving me mid twenties vibes. Like he's definitely giving me upper thirties, potentially hitting forties. Just saying. What brought you to the Abbey? Caretaker. About 10 years ago, she brought me back to the real world. Gave me a place to stay until I came back to myself. Did she ever say why? She said she thought I'd be able to kill more vampires if I was acting on more than just instinct. But I know it was more than that. She gave me safe haven here at the Abbey. Something I'd never known. Must have read half the books in the library by the time I headed out. So when she reached out and asked me to be part of this weird little club, of course I showed up. Tell me about the Midnight Suns. All right. <laughs> okay, let's maybe he's a little sensitive do you have any thoughts on the team as a whole I think we're the only ones aware of the danger Lilith poses to this world and I think we're pretty green but enough training will get us through it speaking of training we doing this or are we gonna keep wasting daylight? yeah okay we're doing this I'm ready to train finally <laughs> <sighs> All right. Okay, so here, a couple things are happening. Uh, we're going to upgrade cards, but also, each time we upgrade cards or spar or anything, we increase our training level. We get training XP. Uh, at our next training level advancement, we get uh, vaulting deals nice increased damage. This Are damage you, uh, from environmental attacks here. is often going to be time more than what we can do level. with our superheroes' basic attacks. So if we possess two copies of an ability, they can be combined to create a new, more powerful version. So we have now three copies of Make Em Bleed. You might be wondering, okay, well I have two copies of Strike, why can't I just upgrade that? Because you need to have it as an extra. You need to be able to fill your deck with something else and we don't have that option yet. So here you can see it's gonna cost two Make Em Bleed cards. It needs Skill Essence because it's a skill card and you're gonna get one training XP for doing it. Um, so that, those attack skill and heroic essences in the top right, you really don't want to fall behind on those. 
because that'll hinder your upgrade progress. But sometimes you can't get everything done that you want, and, you know, that's tough. Later. Later, bro. Good chat. Hunt. Yeah. Okay, bye. Like the way you move out there, Hunter. Guess Doctor Strange picked the right supernatural demon hunter to resurrect. I'm Carol. Carol Danvers. But you can call me Captain Marvel. Kidding. Carol's fine. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw a bone to the Avengers PR team. Not gonna lie. Going a few rounds in Vampire Guy's Magic Thunderdome sounds like fun. But we've got bigger fish to fry. Well, not so much fish as that ginormous invulnerable sewer monster that swallowed the Sanctum. Hmm. The Venom creature surprised me before. He will not do so again. That thing's tougher than a flurkin' furball. You better steer clear of him and his creepy slime shield for a while. Strange Caretaker and the rest of the funky bunch can try and magic their way through that shield all they want. <sighs> if my time as a pilot taught me one thing, it's that sometimes you've got to find a workaround. As in Hydra, they've got to know the way inside. Steve's always said they aren't much for talking. But then again, I'm told I can be rather persuasive when I need to be. I believe it. Just how far are you willing to go, Captain? Let's just say that I'm willing to unleash the power of a quantum singularity white hole on them if need be. Uh, quantum... I detect what? sexual undertones. I don't know. You'll Is that just me? <laughs> Find me in the war room when you're finished here. There's a few things we should discuss. Oh, and Hunter? Welcome back from the dead. Oh, yes, thanks. Feels great. There's a lot of stuff around the Abbey. Like, I have no clue. That's probably someone or something cool, but I literally have no idea. Um, let me check the map here really quick. Do we have... No, just her. Can show the grounds. Okay. Let's go touch base. Nothing is certain these days, but these readings are too distinct to ignore. The gamma signature is... Sorry, Bruce. We lost you. Did you say gamma? Correct. I heard Gamma as well. Yes, ga Hang on a second. Come on, Tony. You managed to stream the Super Bowl to a Kree battleship 50 light years out. This should be easy. <laughs> oh, we waited all year for that game, and you know the Skrulls would have spoiled it for us if they got the chance. Well, can't you just... I don't know. Work my magic again? See, that's the problem. This time I am working with actual magic, and let me tell you, it sucks. Ow. The gamma signature is completely inverted. The daughter nuclei are being reabsorbed into the parent nuclei, which is impossible. If the gamma signature from the sanctum is really that unique, Bruce, then couldn't we just... Sorry, we're still working out a few gremlins in the system. Try sunlight, and whatever you do, avoid water. Oh, wait, you're being serious? <sighs> We should be able to track this new Gamma Signature to its source then, right? I'd do it myself, but we seem to be having a little IT trouble today. <laughs> Please. Old Central here is ready to grind through that data like chunk. What exactly is a Central? C-E-N-T-R-A-L. Cognitive Encryption Net Transmogrification. <laughs> uh, we'll figure it out later. AI Lunker. Now. Hope your gremlins enjoy Gamma spectroscopy. Ah, well, he's been a little moody lately, ever since, you know, the problem with the big old green I guy. I heard that. Banner can't turn into the Hulk? Not sure oh. if he should be frightened or relieved. That makes two of us. Oh, hey, come on. Happens to everyone. Well, okay, not everyone. Nice work, Bruce. I know that place. Creepy abandoned warehouse in the bad guy part of town. My favorite kind. Anybody up for paying it a visit? Definitely. <laughs> Aw, see that? <laughs> Teamwork goosebumps. Oh, yeah. Find me when you're ready. Multi-million dollar piece of experimental technology, and she kicks it. Okay. 
All we have left is to select our mission. The Faustian Bargain. It was just recently that the Hudson Yards Development Restoration Association purchased this entire block. I'll let you think about that one for a minute. So our first few missions are going to be uh, story missions, and they're going to have required heroes. Eventually this will open up and we'll be able to make more of our choices. This is going to give, grant us an artifact here as well, which is going to introduce us into uh, Doctor Strange research. And we should be able to get more into the flow of start with a mission, do the base stuff, uh, rest, finish anything in the morning, and then get a mission ready, and that's how we'll end episodes. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you guys could drop a like on these early videos, that means the world to me. It helps out so much. And uh, I'm going to, as I've been doing here, I want to take my time with this and just have a, a solid solid time with it and just experience as much as I can. Check out the links down below if you want, uh, if you guys are interested in the game yourself. And other than that, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.